All right, what's going on everybody? It's Theme here and welcome to today's video on the channel. And in today's video, I have a guide to spell elements for Wizard 101. Now in this video, we'll be talking about each category of spell elements, the base, standard, one to six, beast moon, gold key, lore spell elements, novice, and shadow hit spell elements. So I will have timestamps provided in this video as well. And I'll be going into detail with what spell elements you'll want to get basically as a priority for each school as well. And uh, if you find this video useful at all, a like rating and a sub is always appreciated. I do post every single day and I stream every day over on Twitch as well at 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, yeah, without further ado, y'all, let's get right into this video. So starting off with your standard spell elements, we have ranks 1 to 6 that you get from questing from Wizard City all the way up to Dragon Spire. So you have Thunder Snake, Lightning Bats, you have Storm Shark, you have Kraken, Stormzilla, and Triton, right? This is also the same for other schools like Imp, Leprechaun, Nature's Wraith, Seraph, you know, uh, Earthwalker, Centaur, yada yada. I think you get what I mean there. So for the most part, things are pretty standard here. You obviously get the rank one and rank two from Krakatopia and Wizard City. Now you can do a elemental retriever pet or spiritual, retrie spiritual retriever pet. I do have that right here. You can find that in the kiosk as well. Um, I would not recommend this method of obtaining spell elements. You can if you want, it's not terrible but it's a little bit tedious in my opinion, and I much rather prefer just questing and finding a boss to farm for these spell elements. Now keep in mind, these spell elements are tricky because if you go past level 50, you actually cannot get these spell elements. So I'm a max level wizard right now on this character. If I go ahead and try to farm a boss to get, you know, max tier Thunder Snake, right here, I won't get any drops actually. So you have to be careful and you have to make sure you don't over level too much when you're trying to max tier your spell elements. But yeah, Thunder Snake and Lightning Bats, again, these will be in Wizard City and Krakatopia. You can find any boss that drops them and farm them. I will be doing a PvE walkthrough series as well here on the channel, so I'll probably get a bit more accurate info on where to specifically farm for those in the future. But bosses in Wizard City or in Krakatobia will drop these rank 1 and 2. 3 and 4 can be found in Marlebone and uh, Mushu. I'd say 3 and 4 is primarily focused in Marlebone more than Mushu. Mushu is more like Stormzilla and Triton. You can also use cantrip chests as well to get spell elements. Uh, this is probably the next best thing, you know? If you can get a cantrip chest, a retriever pet, and farm, you know, some spell elements, you'll be, you know, just fine, really, with uh, being very efficient with obtaining all of these. I know me personally, I just use the cantrip strategy and the retriever strategy for getting my rank 3 and four is max tier. Um, you can also farm croc rematches as well, guys. Croc rematches, which are in the arena, do drop you some standardized spellments as well. I know I got a couple of like locust swarms from the croc rematch, which is right here, uh, Rachel or whatever. So you can get these and farm these for your lower rank 1 to 4 spell mints as well. That is a pretty decent method. And you do get some Azoth on the side as well. So it's pretty darn cool and she's not bad either. Then like I said, Stormzilla and Triton are mostly around Mushu. You can get Kraken and Mushu as well. But I'm going to show you guys a quick method here to obtain majority of your standardized spell mints. So... There are two places in Dragonspire that drop basically, I think, what is it, rank 3 to 6, which is really good. You're knocking out like half the ballpark uh, by farming these specific bosses. Now, there are two bosses. There are an elemental one and a spirit one. So if you're going for death spellments, for example, you'll want to farm Bolt 1999, which I'll be heading to on screen right now. 
And if you're farming elemental spellaments, you will be wanting to farm the Boris Blackrock, I believe, in the Crucible. I will throw him up on screen right now. So yeah, this will be the guy you want to farm for your elemental spell elements. You can already see these people doing that here, I think. Or maybe they're questing. I don't really know. But the method for this is to get a max level to carry you and then be on your account that is below like level 50 so you can get the drops, basically. Uh, I think they are farming, by the way. So basically what would happen here is I, the max, would just go ahead and destroy Boris and they would maybe buff me or pass, uh, I would get no drops, but they would get a crap ton of drops. Like, I'm talking 20 spell elements in like 30 seconds from ranks 3 to 6. So, it is really solid, and this is really all you do for the elemental Boris Blackrock fight. And you do it the same thing at the Vault 1999, which is in the Grand Chasm dungeon. Next up, we'll be talking about Beast Moon Spellaments. Now, Beast Moon Spellaments are pretty tough to get. I have about tier 4 on all of them, as you can see on screen here. I'm doing pretty good with that. Um, there are a couple of ways to obtain these. One would be the Beast Moon Seeds, the Beast Moon Planners in your dorm room and whatnot. These aren't bad, but they're kind of a wild card if they're good or not. And you do need a lot of hasty harvest to get them pretty quickly. So you can play a lot of Beast Moon, make a lot of seeds, and put them down here and hope you get what you want. But a more direct and focused way to get what you want out of Beast Moon specifically would be the Moon Gold Dust tactic. So I'll show you guys what that is here. Basically, I'm going to go up to my basic crafting station, right? And I can craft all these spell elements, as you can see. I can craft Iron Curse. I can craft, you know, Stormwing, Golem, yada yada. All you need for this is some TC, uh, some idols of the school that you're trying to craft, and Moon Gold Dust from obviously playing and grinding Beast Moon within the event tab. Uh, I think it's the PvE Beast Moon, but yeah. That's a pretty consistent way to get the Beast Moon spell elements you want. And every time you craft them, actually here, let me go ahead and craft something for y'all. I'll craft, uh, I'll craft an Iron Curse, okay? So I am at, what am I at on Iron Curse? Four. So if I craft an Iron Curse, it says Iron Curse five. So now I'm at nine. So every time you craft one piece here, you get five spell elements, so it's pretty good, very direct, and very quick. And this is how I personally got my Beast Moon spell elements uh, leveled up relatively quickly, and I'm very, very proud of that. Next up, we have the Gold Key bosses. Now, these are all the revamped Gold Key bosses. Now, there are a lot of them. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. We have, uh, we have Catch of the Day in Mushu. What else do we have? We have uh, Drowned Dan in Celestia, we have the Big Brute guy in Wisteria, we have the Azteca crying guy, uh, we have a lot of, a lot of stuff to talk about here, you know? So, let's, uh, just dive right into that right away. So briefly, I'm just gonna go through these elements here in my tab. Basically, we have Nautilus Unleashed, which can be found in Drowned Dan and Celestia. We have Krampus, which can be farmed from the limited time event of Krampus in the Christmas time or Christmas in July. We have Brimstone Revenant, which is farmed in the uh, Lore Master's Chamber in Dragonspire. We have Hephaestus, which can be farmed in Aquila at the Medusa Lady. Celestial Intervention can be farmed again at Drowned Dan in Celestia. Angry Snow Pig can be farmed at the weird looking dude in Wisteria in the Tangle Woodway. Handsome Fomare can be farmed in Avalon at Lambent Firecaster. Winter Moon can be farmed in the Azteca Boss in Three Points. Hammer Thor can be farmed at the Savastard Pass in Grizzleheim right behind the waterfall there at King Boar. Fairy Surprise can be farmed at the 
Crab Alley Boss, Spirit of Ignorance. Catalan can be farmed at the Lambent Firecaster we talked about just a second ago. Queen Calypso can be farmed at Aqua at the Medusa Lady as well. Splash Squatch can be farmed at Spirit of Ignorance in Crab Alley. Keeper of the Flame can be farmed at Loremaster in Dragon Spire. Ninja Pigs can be dropped and farmed, I believe, at the Taknobu guy in Mushu. And Athena can be farmed in the Aquila Medusa boss. Ratspin can be farmed at King Boar again in Grizzleheim. Pigsy can be farmed at the ugly looking dude in Wisteria in Tanglewood Way. Camp Bandit can be farmed at the Spirit of Ignorance at Crab Alley. Lumi can be farmed at Loremaster in Dragonspire. Goat Monk can be farmed at Takanobu in Mushu. Chip Pools can be farmed at Celestia Drowned Dan. Deer Knight can be farmed at the Lambent Guy in Avalon. Lord of Night can be farmed at the Azteca Dude in Three Points. Ninja Piglets can be farmed at the Ugly Dude in Wisteria. Samurai can be farmed at Takanobu in Mushu Cave of Solitude. Savage Paw can be farmed in the Azteca Three Points. Lore Master can be farmed, obviously, at Lore Master in Dragon Spire. And that is all the lore spell elements we have to cover. Again, these are fights that require gold keys now, and they are significantly harder than they were before. But they're not that bad if you have a team, a full team, that knows what they are doing. Now, let's talk about shadow spells, shadow spell elements, if you will. Now, there are two different types of shadow spell elements. There are caramel shadow spell elements, like, you know, Sand and Musicology, Dark and Stormy. Uh, Sand and mu Musicology can be farmed basically anywhere in caramel. Now, also, if you have a Retriever pet, that is extremely good in caramel. Um, I personally farmed the last fight for my max tier spell elements, but some people do have success farming Heidi. With that, Dark and Stormy, you can just get that from doing side quests and questing all through Lemuria and using a Retriever pet pretty easily. You can also farm the last fight of uh, sorry, Lemuria as well, which will drop you a lot of these spell mints. But um, in general, questing through with a Retriever pet and also doing side quests will basically get you these two spells max tier, assuming you have a retriever pet mid. Now for the novice spells. Now the novice spells are kind of literally all over the place. Um, you can get other schools novice spells dropped, even though like I'm on a storm, I can get, you know, the pyramid one that's on balance. So a lot of this stuff is just purely RNG, but novice farming, we, as we all know, is kind of a tedious grind. So no matter what boss you're doing, you're basically going to get these spell elements. So for whatever piece you're farming, whether that's like your hat, your robe, your wand, your theme, your ring, your deck, right? You'll just passively get all of these up while you're doing your novice farming. But I would suggest doing the last fight because the last fight drops you a lot of good stuff. We're talking 34 flats, we're talking 155 health jewels, and just, you know... A considerable amount of spell elements for every school. And again, same tactic as Lemur Lemuria and Caramel. If you have a Retriever pet, you do the side quests, you do the entire world, and you do a bit of farming, you'll have no problem getting all of these uh, Lemuria, sorry, Nova spell, good lord, Nova spell uh, max tier. I know I got this one max tier, like basically for free, relatively easily. So. Uh, yeah, I think that covers everything guys. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. If I had to rate everything, you know, from how we formatted this video, I would say the most important spells probably would be getting your standard rank 1 through 6s on every school. You know, these moon spell elements aren't that important. They have a very small impact, you know, whether you do PvP or PvE. Wouldn't really suggest doing those ones. I would definitely suggest getting all your rank 1 to 6 max tiered if you can. That will help you out a lot. Your shadow hits do not need to be max tiered. But again, it's more of like an OCD thing. I feel like, you know, 
Uh, they are extremely helpful when they are max tiered. So I would say for the most part, man, get your standard rank 1 to 6 max tier and work on your lore spells. Most of the lore spells are pretty darn good. Uh, you know, for example here, Storm, Hammer Thor is pretty bad. Uh, Catalan, S tier card, right? You know, Queen is pretty decent and Barry is pretty good. So you can just go through and look at what you want for your lore spells respectively. And uh, yeah, I think that's really all I gotta say. You know, just prioritize the rank one to six and the gold key bosses for whatever school you are on. And uh, really ask yourself what spell element you wanna go for with what, you know, suits your play style. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I will see you on the next one. If you made it this far, again, a like, rating, and a sub is appreciated. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching. And as always, take care, y'all.